gonna be profiling the Osmo Pocket 3 from DJI because it has D-Log M. The thing I've noticed though is the D-Log M on this camera is different than like D-Log, say the Mavic 3 Pro. So it's very important to, again, profile all these different sensors because sometimes the uh, color science is gonna be a little bit different based off the sensor. So we wanna make sure that we're matching every camera properly to themselves. Oh, I'm not recording. <laughs> Red Komodo Red Log 3G10 versus the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 D Log M. All right, let's go ahead and dive in and take a look at some footage shot on the Osmo Pocket 3 and how to properly color grade D-Log M. All right, we have a few different clips right here that we can take a look at. And the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about the order of operations. So whenever we want to work with D-Log M footage, uh, the proper steps are going to be applying the, the base LUT or a conversion LUT and then working through the exposure and white balance. After that, then you can go into the creative and start working with some kind of creative look or development there. So the first thing that we're gonna do, I have a node tree here on the timeline level that's gonna apply to all the clips because we're working with only Osmo Pocket 3 footage. Um, and then I have kind of three different paths here that we can take a look at. One is just the standard base LUT, one is the base LUT in bold, and then also the DaVinci wide gamut workflow and how you can apply apply our base LUTs so that you're still working in a wide color space if you want to take advantage of that workflow. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to navigate to our LUTs tab over here and we're going to navigate to the Osmo Pocket 3 and then this one's for Rec. 79. So we're going to go ahead and apply that and immediately footage looks really good. Now once we have that applied we want to go ahead and take a look at our exposure and white balance. Um, just looking at this shot right now, I feel like the exposure is pretty good. We do have a color chart here, so we can go ahead and uh, head over to our clip level. And uh, I've created kind of a window here so we can kind of see this color chart and we can take a look at on our scopes where things sit. Um, let me go ahead and change to make sure that we're in the RGB so we can see. Okay, so now we need to adjust our white balance. And by looking at these scopes, we can see that it's a lot more red uh, in, uh, in this shot. So we need to correct that for the white balance. So I went ahead and already corrected the white balance. Uh, if we want to redo that, I will just right click, go to gamma and I'm going to change to linear. And then I take the gain in the color wheels and I can tweak it until everything kind of lines up. So I'm just going to keep moving it until they all somewhat line up and get really close. And we have a really pretty good match right there. So since that's already dialed in, we're good to go. We can turn off our chart and see that everything looks good. Um, we can adjust our ex exposure more if we want to as well uh, because of the way that this was lit uh, and the angle this shot is in, the um, exposure is going to be a little bit different because of the reflection on this chart. But for the most part, this is fairly close uh, for what I like. Uh, and then we can kind of just scan through some of the shots and kind of see how that base LUT applied to the footage looks. And I mean, honestly, I feel like that looks really good. If you look at the before and after, I mean, I think that looks fantastic, especially with all these different colors. I feel like it all is really cohesive and worked really hard with developing this conversion to make sure that everything is as accurate as possible. Uh, now, we have the standard base LUT here. The other option is uh, a bold version. So 
we can go ahead and come over here and we can take this bold version and apply that as well. So you can choose whether you want to have a bold look or if you want to have the more standard neutral one. If you're building looks on top of something or if you're wanting to add a creative look, highly recommend the standard primary one. If you want something that looks really great and is well saturated and kind of ready for market, then you can go ahead and just do the bold version. Uh, and what's really unique about this is we worked really hard to kind of develop a really great uh, saturation boost here that takes into account all these colors and the different density levels that honestly reflects how the color would look in linear before adding any tone mapping. And that's kind of where we went whenever we were working with our saturation. So there's a really unique boost that's going on on this bold look that isn't destroying skin tones. It's not just taking saturation. It's not adjusting the color slice tool over here. Um, it's really unique with how it's handling the saturation and density levels and it's keeping it all cohesive. So we actually put that into this LUT. So for you uh, users that want to have that bold look, you go ahead and have that uh, dialed in with that adjustment. Now, uh, once you have that uh, set up, you can go ahead and come over and start working with, say, a creative look of some kind. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and go navigate to our LUTs again, and I'm just going to work with Cineclipse Plus. This is a LUT pack that we have available on our site with Gamut, and if we want to apply that and kind of see how that looks, I'm just going to do Cineclipse 1. So immediately we have the original shot here, and then we have the base LUT that we already applied, with the conversion now. So now if people are asking, hey, I want D log M LUTs, I want these creative LUTs, one thing to keep in mind is there's two parts to it. You have a technical transform that works through uh, correcting all the colors as they should be reflected. And then you have the creative aspect that's more subjective. And so it's really important to split those apart because now if this look is too intense, if it was tied together with the base LUT, then if you change the intensity, you're gonna, your colors are going to be shifting away from where the neutral point is. So if we come over here to our key output and we're selecting our creative look, I can change the intensity without adjusting the technical transform. That's super important. So say we have this look and we really love this creative look, but maybe we want to have it at like 60%. So there's off. There's on, I'm gonna go ahead and make it full screen and then everything off and then collectively both the base LUT and the creative LUT applied at the same time. So I feel like it, it's really important to be able to split those up and I think it's really cool that we were able to do that. Uh, and then again, if you really wanna have that bold look, you can go ahead and do that but then it's gonna really push the colors. But look at, you can see it still pulls everything in really well. It doesn't keep things out of bounds. Even the tone mapping is really uh, unique with how we handled this conversion, which I'll show in another video. So that is um, how we're displaying and showing the base LUT and then the base LUT bold along with the creative look. So one thing you could do is if you wanted to use the bold version and say it comes out and it's a little bit more saturated or a little bit more poppy than you want, uh, instead of changing the intensity of this technical transform, you never want to touch the intensity of a color space transform or a conversion LUT or a base LUT, anything that's changing the colors to their, their neutral point. What you want to do is you want to do that on a clip level. So if this is a little bit too intense, then move over to the clip and let's go ahead and uh, grab this node right here. And we can just take our, our saturation and we can dial that back. So I'm going to have that right here. And you can see I'm changing the intensity. And I can just take the edge off just a little bit. So maybe like 43 here. So there we have the still the bold version, but we're not touching the transform and we're just doing it on the clip level while still keeping a little bit of that bold look. But ideally, if it's too intense, I would say just stick with the, the standard base LUT right here. But if you want something in between, that's how you would adjust that. I just wanted to point that out. Now, whenever we want to work through DaVinci Wide Gamut, what's really powerful is we worked really intensely on creating a workflow that would convert all of these primary base LUTs to work in DaVinci Wide Gamut. And that was very tricky with the development of these base LUTs. Let's go ahead and take a look at our base LUT for DaVinci Wide Gamut and how that should be applied. So I'm going to navigate over to DJI. We have our base LUTs here. 
the pocket three, and then we have DaVinci wide gamut. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to apply that, and that's taking D log M and converting it to DaVinci intermediate, DaVinci wide gamut, so that now you're in this wider color space. The tools will respond sometimes a little bit differently. Maybe they're more nuanced, and you like to grade in that. Now, this is very specific for DaVinci Resolve, of course. And then on the output, you can choose how you want to go to display. So we can take our color space transform since this is in DaVinci wide gamut. Let's go ahead and set that as our input. And then our output, we're going to do rec 709 because this is the display we're going to. Uh, I'm going to do gamma 24. And then I'm going to use DaVinci's tone mapping. And then I'm also going to do saturation compression just because I know this image is very saturated. So here we actually have a workflow where we are getting accurate color representation with D log M in DaVinci wide gamut, which is huge. So now this is where we would color grade in between these sandwiched uh, conversions so that now we're working in DaVinci wide gamut and we get access to that color space with the way we want to push and um, influence the color in this image. So here we can go ahead and do any adjustments that we want to, and that would be the proper workflow. So if you're curious on how to work with DaVinci Wide Gamut, this is a very basic structure of how you go from log to DaVinci Wide Gamut, then you can color grade, and then you go out to your display, which would be Rec. 709 here. Then you could add a creative LUT right here. So that also allows you the freedom to use whatever kind of uh, ODT or output transform that you want for your display. In this case, we're using the color space transform. We also have another option that we're going to make available where we made a really unique Rec. 709 um, uh, transform, and that one is available right here. So DaVinci Wide Gamut to Rec. 709, and then I'm going to go ahead and just disable the color space transform so it's only using the LUT. So this is the LUT that we pretty much used for all of our transforms to Rec. 709 with some other fine adjustments. Now what's unique about this Rec. 709 uh, output transform is it's based on the 2499 transform that a lot of people like to use. And we did some fine tune adjustments to it and got it to where we liked it. And then we did a couple other tweaks to it to kind of get it exactly where we wanted. And we really worked through some of the tone mapping options. And this is the look that we prefer to use when we're going to Rec. 709. You could do that, or again, like I said, you can just use the color space transform instead, and that is totally fine as well. You will get a little bit of a different response because the tone mapping is a little bit different. The colors should still be pretty much in the general formation of how they were uh, developed to be uh, neutral based. So just keep that in mind. Um, but this is the proper workflow whenever you're working with DaVinci Wide Gamut when you want to color grade D-Log M. And again, you're not having to do a lot of guesswork where, you know what, I'm having to adjust my contrast, my saturation, let's pull down this. We've done all that guesswork in these base LUTs, which is so important for D-Log M. And this is why I feel like it's so easy to color grade footage from Osmo Pocket 3 now because of these base LUTs. So make sure that you check them out on our site if you're interested. And this will honestly speed up your workflow tremendously. Now, if we want to try a different look or a different LUT, so we can come over here. Uh, I'm just going to navigate to another pack that we have called Kinetic. I really like this one specifically for this look. I like the way the yellows look, um, and I feel like it holds together really well. Again, if we want to change our intensity, we just come over to our key output, and we can just change that to taste if we want it really strong. Um, again, I think this one feels pretty good. Most creative looks, I feel like, land more in that 50 to 60% range. I feel like it's really nice, but we also have that flexibility to push it if we want to. Um, now, if we want to compare how these looks um, will compare to like DJI's D-Log M LUT for the Osmo Pocket 3, then let's go ahead and take a look at that. So here we have the very beginning stage. This is our conversion base LUT right here, and then this is DJI's so it's a little bit more contrast, a little more punchy, but honestly, I feel like this looks really good. I would say this clip looks great. I'm like, oh, you know what? I think this this LUT from DJI works really well. Well, let's let's push it and let's check it and see how it responds in other scenarios. So there is a shot here where we were filming with these um, bright lights, and we had this moment where if you look at these, this pink light that is hitting uh, this shirt, this white shirt, you can see that is actually clamping and causing some issues where this is starting to fall apart because of, I would say, the tone mapping, the, the saturation levels are really pushed on here. But if you use our base LUT, you can see that it really holds together really well. And then also, even if you were to use the bold version, 
it still holds up really well. Okay, so let's take a look at the bold version versus the DJI's one. And you can see that there's a lot more clamping. We're losing a lot more detail here. And this is just one light. I imagine also in some other stronger cast lights, you're going to have issues where that falls apart. Um, so that is something to note. If you're going to use DJI's LUT, it is pushing the contrast really strong, and it's also pushing the saturation. I can even navigate to another clip here where I'm filming outside with a friend. We're filming this car with uh, the 4D from DJI, and I was also filming some BTS on the Osmo Pocket 3, which is what this clip is. And whenever I added DJI's LUT to it, you can see on this uh, waveform right here that it's just crushing the black. So we're losing all that detail in the shadows. But if we're using our base LUT, we still have that maintained right here, and it's just sitting at that low threshold area. Even the bold version, if we wanted to, it's still not crushing. So holding together really well. We can also take a look at the DaVinci Wide Gamut uh, workflow here. So all this is developed to hold and retain that shadow information to keep really good, nice contrast levels while also keeping the uh, saturation levels intact so that we're not blowing anything out. Again, to take a look at everything, we have uh, the shot. Again, this is the base LUT. We have the base LUT bold that we have right here, which if it's too intense, again, you go to the clip level, and then you can just uh, take down some of the saturation to taste if you still want to use that bold version, but you don't want it to be intense. Don't change it on. Don't touch the technical transform. Don't touch the base LUT intensity. Always do it on a clip level. Uh, and then also we have the DaVinci Wide Gamut workflow for those that are in DaVinci Wide Gamut and want to use that workflow. This will be phenomenal for you, especially if you're working with a lot of different cameras and you want to maintain a consistency across all that and all those matching. That's why we've created these base LUTs and that's why we've also created it in DaVinci Wide Gamut so you get access to this workflow. And then lastly, you can just add any kind of creative look to kind of create that pop and make everything kind of stand out and just change your intensity to taste if you want. Uh, and then everything will shine. So you go from before with D log M straight out of camera, no adjustments, and then adding the conversion and then a creative look at the end. And again, you have an amazing looking image that you're ready to deliver. So there you go. If you have any further questions on the Osmo Pocket 3 or how to properly color grade D-Log M, if you have any issues, let's continue this dialogue in the comments below. Again, also, all these baselets are available on our site at gamma.io. We have been working really hard extensively for the past eight months developing this brand new collection that is based on sensor level uh, camera matching. So we're working through each individual cameras and we've noticed so much information about uh, D-Log M on say the Osmo Pocket 3 is not going to match D-Log M on a Mavic 3 Classic for instance. So it's very important that we create an accurate match on each camera so that whenever you're filming across a different multitude of options, you're going to have a perfect match that has a great neutral base. If this video is helpful, then don't forget to like this video and also subscribe if you haven't already, because we're going to be putting out a lot more content that's breaking down color grading and working with matching a lot of different cameras and how to get the most out of your footage. As always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Happy grading.